Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Dennis Siminski, and we're here at Mark Sublet's Medicine Man Gallery, and uh, he's uh, given me a show, and I've decided to do trains. I've done shows before for Mark, and a couple of them have been uh, about trains, planes, and automobiles. I love painting things like that, and so I've concentrated on just one thing here for this Southwest Gallery, and that's uh, the historical part about trains. And uh, so um, in this first piece uh, right here, it's called Sunset Among the Saguaros, Through the Saguaros. <laughs> I don't even know my own titles, but um, this is a train that the Southern Pacific uh, had uh, back in the uh, 30s, 40s and 50s that used to go to, from uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles to Houston in Texas. So it would travel through Arizona. And uh, I thought putting a sunset, having a sunset actually, and the name of the train would, uh, would be a, a kind of a, a interesting way about putting together a landscape and a train together. Um, doing sunsets and sunrises is a very difficult thing. You have to be at a sunset and sunrise to really get the uh, actual uh, heart-throbbing uh, interest in, in uh, the whole aspect of that time of day. So it's not a very easy thing to do, but I think uh, in this instance, we got it, or I got it here. So over here we have uh, two other paintings that uh, are of the same format, uh, which is a, just a, uh, a side view of uh, some very interesting uh, historical parts of trains uh, that were in the Southwest. The Southern Pacific Company was in the Southwest, went through the southern part of Arizona and New Mexico and into Texas from California, and the Santa Fe, which went through the northern part of Arizona from Chicago all the way through the Midwest into Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Arizona into California to Los Angeles. And um, I've always been fascinated with cabooses as, ever since I was a kid. Uh, and uh, Santa Fe had the, the most uh, unusual kind of uh, markings, uh, had the logo nice and big on the side. so. Uh, I thought that that would be kind of fun to paint. Uh, the Southern Pacific uh, had very interesting uh, engines. Uh, it's not to say that Santa Fe didn't either, but uh, those two companies being in the South, the biggest companies in the Southwest, from what I understand, um, that painting up there, uh, I wanted to do kind of a nocturne uh, with uh, steam being illuminated by a surrounding lighting uh, and what happened inside the cab of the uh, engine, which got very hot because of the fueling. Uh, and it was oil fueled. These were oiled uh, tank cars that uh, normally you'd have the coal car behind, and they would put the coal in the uh, engine, you know, part of the train. Here, this was. Uh, a, fueled by oil. So uh, those are the historical parts of, of the these two paintings here. Uh, I've used my design sense. I went to the California College of the Arts and uh, I studied uh, illustration and design. And so my paintings have a tendency to be uh, designed. And so that's why you get some of these features and we'll see some of the other uh, paintings and I can point out some of that, where taking a profile view like this, or somewhat like that, uh, is kind of my signature thing. Taking one item generally, and we'll go through that too, uh, and just painting that and leaving everything else subordinate. Uh, and these two are just these features here. And we'll go on to the others, but. Uh, these are featured and I just want to concentrate on that, but within just one thing that is uh, 
dominant, there are things like the rust or the dirt that might be coming off or the texture in the clouds. Or in here, we got some uh, paint texture going on all over. Uh, I think uh, that's what I kind of like doing, taking an object and really concentrating on that. Okay, and this piece here uh, called Navajo Horseman, uh, we I talk about the design aspect of, of, of my work. And uh, what I wanted to show here was not just a train, but a people. Uh, uh, something else besides just showing trains was perhaps one of the things that kind of uh, made me feel that I should pursue rather than, uh, than not. So uh, in this piece here, not one I don't think is more dominant than the other. We, we do have uh, the horseman and the train seems to be subordinate even though the train is powerful, these men here seem to be more powerful. And as of today, we don't have the super chief anymore, but these guys are still around. So um, this landscape is, is near Gallup, New Mexico, where the Santa Fe used to go through. Um, I liked uh, the, the texture of the paint is, is important in this, in this painting. Uh, and the detailing that goes on in the horses and the train uh, was fun to, to work in. Um, so the paintings that I had talked about previously where there's just one uh, aspect of the painting, there are many here. And in this painting, not one is more dominant than the other. Uh, so uh, this kind of speaks against what maybe I was saying earlier, however, uh, we do have in the foreground a, a, a more um, dominant feature with the horseman, and the train tends to be less dominant, but the, the way the characters are looking at the train, it almost makes them equal. Um, this is uh, perhaps one of the more successful paintings. I don't bring to any gallery an unsuccessful painting, but uh, this one tended to work out really well. Okay, now we have a couple of pieces that uh, uh, show either a whole train or parts of trains, uh, but there are other things that are going on. Up here, this is called Flash Flood because if you ever have driven in the Southwest, if there happens to be in the desert, happens to be a dip in the road and it's really raining hard, you better be careful. And usually there are signs on the road saying, you know, don't go into that part of the road if there happens to be a, a flooding going on because it could get worse. Uh, in this picture here, flash flood, we have a trestle. The, the train company, the Southern Pacific Train Company has realized that you couldn't put the tracks on the ground in this region because there's a wash nearby and this constantly uh, during the summer, during the monsoon season, uh, tends to flood. So uh, I wanted to show a small working train. It's not a freight train really or a passenger train, but it's taking people uh, who work for the uh, Southern Pacific Company to different sites to work on the tracks or, or uh, transferring uh, uh, personnel. Uh, so uh, there the train goes uh, across the uh, trestle with the floodwaters going. You can just see the storm receding there but it tends to be a landscape, a dominant uh, engine and, and caboose going on. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, a successful piece, I think. Okay, down here, we have um, uh, the Raisin Express. And uh, the Southwest, in my mind, since I'm from California, is, uh, goes from Texas, New Mexico, uh, Arizona, and California, not to say that Nevada and Utah and Oklahoma aren't included in those, but usually the desert Southwest uh, comes to California as well. And this is California. It's California Central Valley, before it had a lot of water, uh, was a desert. But uh, Central Valley near Fresno, uh, that's where they produce uh, raisins. 
and the Southern Pacific and the Santa Fe would come and, and uh, deliver <clears throat> grapes and take away raisins from the packing plants. Um, and this represents that. Uh, we have a part of a train in here. What's dominant in here is the, the name Cinderella Raisins, uh, uh, an old company. Uh, Sunmade is usually the raisins we see, but uh, they used to make raisins too, way back in the time. I tend to like uh, going back in time a little bit and resurrecting some of these scenes uh, because uh, as a kid, I saw some of these trains, a little kid, and, and uh, so I kind of wanted to bring some of that back. So here we have a, a painting that's very much like the first two uh, profiles I did of rail, rail cars or engines here. This is uh, like the caboose uh, for a passenger train. And I call it tail feathers because uh, not only uh, uh, we have feathers in the uh, bonnet of, of the chief here. Uh, that's what they use as tail feathers. But it's the end of the, the tail of the passenger train called the super chief here. And um, I uh, decided, I, I really like the way the texture of the train itself, the metal and the corrugation and the sunlight bouncing off of it. Uh, worked and I wanted to put a, uh, I love doing clouds, and I wanted to put a sky that kind of matched the texture of the, uh, of the train in here. So uh, that's why you get these uh, rippled clouds along with the rippled uh, texture of the train. And up here, we have uh, the Blue Goose. Uh, historically, it was a, streamlined train for uh, Santa Fe Railway. And it uh, had uh, a very short time existence between 1937, I believe, and the early 1940s. And uh, it's rare, if people don't know too much about this train, uh, outside the fact that it was streamlined and the colors were robin's egg blue and uh, silver. And the, it didn't even go to Santa Fe. I've heard tell that it just went from Chicago only till uh, the end of the plains in Colorado somewhere. And I can't remember exactly the, the last station. And then it would transfer over to the steam train before they started doing the diesel streamlined train. So uh, here it comes over a river uh, somewhere on the, the plains. Uh, Colorado or, or Kansas or um, Illinois, uh, uh, Missouri, I guess, is the other state there. So uh, the Blue Goose. Down here is uh, the engineer, uh, a painting that I wanted to uh, show people who work on, on the railroad, too. Uh, I didn't necessarily want to show just trains or engines coming at you or going away from you. Uh, but I wanted to show parts of trains in this uh, show. And uh, so here's an engineer uh, with steam coming up. Um, just a fun little painting. And up here we have uh, River Canyon Reflections. And it's a painting that um, I've taken lots of pictures of canyons throughout the West, not just Southwest. And I'm not sure where this canyon is, but I put a train in it. I frequently do that in my compositions. I take my photography, uh, historical photography, because I didn't, couldn't take pictures of, of some of the older trains, and I put them together. And then I also uh, imagine clouds. Uh, I'm, so into painting clouds that sometimes I need photographic reference like the sunset that I did, but uh, other times I can just bring it up out of my head and uh, produce something like this. So this is like a sunrise or sunset, but it's reflecting 
on the uh, thunderheads in the background that kind of illuminate the canyon below. And um, as, as a uh, addition, we have the train going through the canyon. There's lots of uh, uh, places where trains go through canyons. So this isn't any one particular place, but it represents many places that have trains going through canyons. And at a certain time of day, you get this reflection and this color, which I really wanted to go through and have some great color in there. Up here, we have uh, cab forward through the pass. And uh, cab forward was a uh, ingenious way of getting trains through snow sheds in the wintertime through um, the uh, Sierras, and this happens to be the pass that it's happening to go through is Donner Summit, Donner Pass. And so uh, eventually the, this train goes through uh, snow sheds that are covered with snow. And before they thought of this uh, arrangement of engine where they turn the train around, uh, they would go through these snow sheds and the engineer and everybody on the train would get s smoked, you know, all that steam and smoke would start to uh, affect them. So uh, they put windows on the back part of the cab, turn the train around, and uh, then they could avoid getting smoked. You can see the smoke coming up out of the engine, puffing its way over the pass, uh, and um, go through those tunnels of snow without getting gassed with, with the uh, smoke on a train. So this is Donner Summit, uh, close to Donner Summit with a cab forward, they used to call these, the Southern Pacific had a lot of cab forward trains or engines. Okay, here we have an example of, uh, of me coming up with pieces that uh, weren't necessarily train oriented. Uh, I wanted to put features of uh, wildlife or, or landscape or, or uh, personnel uh, without featuring a train all the time. So we have, do have a train down here in the canyon, another one of those canyon uh, shots. But the main feature uh, in, in of this piece is the puma, the, the wildcat up on the hill. The name of this painting is Curiosity, and we know that Curiosity killed the cat. Hopefully the cat is not going to jump on the tracks. It's maybe up a little too high for that. But <clears throat> this is another painting that I think turned out very successfully, and I enjoy it a lot uh, because it's, uh, it makes the train somewhat subordinate, or mostly subordinate, to this wonderful animal up here. And up here we have uh, Valley Bound from the Loop which means uh, it's coming down from Tehachapi in California into the Central Valley. This train uh, is coming down from an area up in here. This is the Tehachapi Range in California. And up in this, near the, the summit, is a part of the track that goes around underneath and on top of itself. And I've been up there where I've actually seen a freight or long freight train go right over the top of itself or right underneath the end. So you can get both the end and the beginning of, of the uh, freight train uh, if you're taking pictures. So this one is a train that's already gone down from that oddity, the, the loop, the Tehachapi loop they called it, or still call it because it's still used. Um, and we have a, a diesel train here but this is a landscape. You know, the, the thing about this is the landscape and the clouds. And uh, putting the train in uh, adds uh, a little more interest to it. And this little one down here is called the most beautiful train in the world because that's the, uh, what they used to call the uh, daylight, the Southern Pacific Daylight Train, the, the uh, streamlined version of the steam train that uh, Southern Pacific used. So. There's a little portrait of, of, of that beautiful train. And down here we have a couple of other paintings stacked up on top of this. Um, but down here we have at Santa Fe Station. 
and it's uh, a conglomeration of several uh, photographs that I've taken uh, and put them together. I, I frequently do that. Uh, I was an illustrator back in the day, and uh, we, uh, or illustrators frequently, put together things to tell a story. And I love telling stories through my painting. And, uh, you know, you could, there's a story in this, I suppose, and you can come up with your own story. Um, and I won't tell you a story right now, but uh, the car, uh, which is a uh, woody station wagon, uh, belongs to a friend of mine in Sonoma. And uh, he has this 1937 uh, station wagon, and he called it a station wagon because uh, it would frequently, it would, would, uh, hotels would take uh, passengers from the train station. They'd frequently have these woodies. They'd throw the luggage in the back. They'd pick up the, pa uh, the, the passengers and bring them the, to the hotel, or vice versa, from the hotel to the station. That's why they were called station wagons. And uh, so here's a cowgirl coming from some place uh, in the West uh, on the uh, Super Chief, and she's uh, requesting a, a ride to uh, the hotel with her, with her bag there. And so uh, she's being picked up at the station in Santa Fe. Uh, I realize for some train uh, aficionados, uh, the Super Chief never arrived at Santa Fe. Uh, occasionally it would go up, but it would stop at a railroad, railroad station pretty close by, Lamy, New Mexico, and uh, drop people off there. Uh, so this is a little bit of a fantasy, and everybody knows Santa Fe and the Santa Fe station is just a beautiful station, so uh, I thought I would put all, the, all of these together. And then up here we have uh, the daylight. And simply called the daylight because it was the train that went from uh, San Francisco to LA and back uh, in from the 1930s to the 19, late 1950s. And uh, my grandparents lived in Palo Alto, California, about a block and a half away from the station. So we'd hear this train uh, when I was a little kid. We'd hear this train and. and go by or stop at the station and it would have a distinct uh, whistle. It sounded more like a ship's horn and uh, it would rattle the uh, breakfast room windows of her house. And so when uh, we heard it coming and you could hear this train coming, we'd run down the block and just to look at it because it was pretty. And it, the, it, it like the little painting that uh, features this train, it was said that this was the most beautiful train in the world. So it's the streamlined version of Southern Pacific. Okay, up here we have um, the Roundhouse. And uh, it's a uh, place where they used to turn train engines, uh, or train units around uh, because the track would end and they wouldn't have a loop to go around to return. So they would turn the engines around uh, very easily, I feel, because e either there's some other people moving this or the uh, train people would uh, themselves move this thing. This is from a, an old photograph of uh, you know, train uh, workers moving the engine around. Um, it's just the, the power of the engine uh, is subordinate to the power of these guys moving it around. And I thought that that was a, an interesting um, uh, feature in this painting here. 